All right, so we're entering week 13. Um, we have class today, and then I wanted to remind everybody that we do not have class on Wednesday. Um, do you remember why? It is Veterans Day, that's right. Um, so on Veterans Day, Lawson is closed. So um, very often on a holiday like this, I will get emails from it, students or advisees who say things like, uh, hey, I'm trying to get in touch with the registrar's office and nobody's picking up. Lawson's closed on Wednesday. So if you're trying to work out something for registration or anything like that, you're going to have to either get it done on Tuesday or get it done on Thursday because the offices will be closed on Wednesday. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I will be available to help you, obviously, in class today. Um, but also on Tuesday and Thursday and Friday this week, if you need to set up a Zoom time to talk with me individually or if you need uh, questions answered by email, um, I won't be available on Wednesday. Um, but you can certainly send me an email on Wednesday. Just please expect to get a reply um, when I get back to work on Thursday. Does that make sense? Fantastic. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you can email me anytime. It's just I may not get to it right away. Um, all right. Uh, let's do a screen share. We're entering our last unit today. Hooray, hooray. Uh, it's our drama unit. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through that. So I'll do a screen share and take us to Blackboard. Um, we have opened a new set of course readings. And I'm going to start with that because the first thing in your unit for this week talks about these readings. So they're up at the top in the module for course readings. Um, and they are the drama readings. <clears throat> and there's a link to the PDF of the death of a salesman. And then there is a link, uh, there is a link to a movie version of Death of a Salesman. Um, and I would like you to engage with both of these. Okay. Um, it is a play, and I really don't think you can get the full impact of a play without seeing it performed. It's meant to be performed. Um, but it's also literature, um, and you can't get the full impact of the literature without reading it, right? So it's really both things, and I'd really like to make sure that you are engaging with both things. Ideally, <clears throat> if, you, if you could, uh, you would have a print copy of Death of a Salesman um, and read along as you watch. Now, of course, that may not be possible, <laughs> um, but that really would be awesome. I remember going to productions of Shakespeare with my Shakespeare text in front of me and kind of following along, um, and it made it much easier to read. It made it much easier to understand, um, so I do encourage you to, um, if you have the time, read it, watch it, and read it again. Um, if you don't, um, again, the ideal would be to read it, read along as you're watching the movie, um, that would be the second ideal. Um, I don't know whether if you're if you're just doing each one time, I think I would watch it and then read it, which maybe sounds contrary to a literary person's advice, but um, I think sometimes it really helps to kind of have the story in your mind when you're reading something for the first time, especially if literature's not your favorite thing. Um, definitely watch it before you read it. Um, if um, if you're one of those purists, though, who likes to have it in their head before they see what anybody else's interpretation of it is, then you can read it first. Um, but do remember, it was meant to be performed. Um, so definitely do watch the movie and read the text. Um, <clears throat> questions about the readings? <clears throat> All right, so there's, again, there's the link to, I'm going to just double check that the links aren't broken. Um, so we have Arthur Miller's, and we're going to talk about this for a few minutes um, in, a, in a moment. So that link is up, and I already checked the link to the death of the uh, salesman in YouTube. Um, but it's in YouTube, and look, it's the full-length movie. It's And I know that's like, it's like a two-hour movie, but the really famous movie, this is a 1985 um performance. It's a really famous performance. It's kind of a classic um, performance of it. It's really well done. 
Um, I mean, I know it's old and the cinematography is going to look old to you, but the acting is phenomenal. It's it's really famous, uh, really classic movie. Um, so definitely enjoy that. Um, and uh, I'm excited for you to see it. Don't watch Mr. Mom instead. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to go down to this week. We're going to take a look at what you have coming up in weeks 13 and I'll preview week 14 with you as well just so you can kind of look ahead okay um all right so we are working this week on uh reading the play and watching the play and understanding our drama terms which we'll go over today in class um there's a quiz for you on drama and the death of a salesman um there's a discussion board and in this discussion board, I'm going to update this, uh, the due date while we're talking. Um, in the discussion board, you're talking about which character interests you the most. Um, now, remember, it doesn't have to be um, the main character to be interesting, right? And sometimes it's more interesting to talk about one of the minor characters or one of the supporting lead roles um, <clears throat> than it is to talk about the main character. Um, November 9th, so this will be due on the, no, it'll be due Wednesday uh, by 11.59. Okay, um, so in your initial post, I'm asking you to tell me which character interests you the most in this play in a 10 to 12 sentence paragraph. Explain why this character interests you. Use a quote or two from the text to support your thinking. And please remember that you do not need to choose the main character. It's often more interesting to examine a supporting character in the play. Um, respond to at least three peers' posts and two to three sentences. Add some detail about the character they wrote about that they did not mention and say why you find that detail interesting. So again, not, hey, great job, I like that character too, but here's what I thought was interesting about that character and adding to it, okay? Um, questions about the discussion board? All right, so there's a method to my madness. Um, which is that we are working on our last essay, which is a character analysis, okay? Um, and I'm going to take a look at this assignment. I'll update the due date while we're talking about it again. And in this assignment, your goal is to trace a character and how they have changed from the beginning of the story, or the beginning of the play, to the end of the play. Um, and talk about some character um, feature, character flaw, character trait that has changed significantly about them through the course of the play. So um, I, let's talk about that in more detail. Upload a Word file or PDF of an outline for our character analysis essay for our drama unit. For this assignment, so the, when I say for this assignment, I mean the essay assignment, right? You will choose one character and analyze their development. To write a character analysis, we begin with a thesis that observes that this character changes in some particular and important way through the course of the play. The character becomes more mature, the character loses faith, the character becomes more cynical, the character becomes less selfish. Um, and then we trace the character through the pivotal moments in the play that lead to this change. Okay, um, and below is a sample outline for a different play, and you'd model your outline after this one. Um, so we have, uh, ta we're talking about another play, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, um, where one of the main characters' name is Maggie, um, and say Maggie becomes less selfish as Cat on a Hot Tin Roof comes to its conclusion. Maggie is very selfish and self-centered at the beginning of the play, and then you can see that B, I jump to Maggie and Britt get into a huge fight in their room. And I think that's a pivotal moment for them, that fight. Um, and then C, I'm saying the father-in-law's health crisis in the climactic scene helps her to see beyond herself. And that's where I think she changes, okay? Um, and then the details are just there to talk about the details of, of her selfishness at the beginning of the play. She insults her husband. She competes with her sister-in-law. She seems oblivious to the struggles of her father-in-law. She's really all about herself. Um, Maggie and Britt get into a huge fight. 
She's lied about being pregnant. She tells him he's a drunk. She complains that he doesn't treat her well and they share the same cage. And he tells her that she's selfish and unloving to him. And then um, in that final crisis, I say she sees him in crisis and realizes she loves him. She sees her husband is in crisis as well. She offers some compassion to her husband for the first time. She and her husband head to their room and we see hope for their improved relationship. Um, and then my concluding idea is that Mag Maggie has to be shaken out of her selfishness by nearly losing a loved one, but at least she does snap out of it in the end, or appears to, maybe, temporarily, we don't know. Um, but you can see the basic thesis that we're working with here is that there's this character trait of selfishness, and I'm maintaining that Maggie gets less selfish through the course of the play. And then I'm going to show you those three pivotal moments, her being selfish in the beginning, crisis in the middle, improvement at the end, ta-da. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, now you don't know the characters in Death of a Salesman yet, right? Um, you might want to do uh, Willie Loman. He's our main character. You might want to do one of his two sons. You might want to do his wife. Um, and any of those are wonderful choices um, make sure that you are thinking about how that character changes. Do they give up hope? Um, do they grow up a little? Do they get more mature? Do they get more selfish? Do they get less competitive? Um, what is it that changes about them? And where are those pivotal moments that they change, right? Um, so when we take a look at the script for a minute, let's take a look at this. No, that's not it. Where's the script? There's the script. Okay, um, when we're talking about this, we wanna notice who we have here. And we have Willie and Linda, that's his wife. That's Willie Loman and his wife, Linda. So th you could pick at random. Um, and then we have their sons, um, Biff and Happy. <laughs> and those are the um, four major characters in here. You might see a few more, but not really. It's a really small cast. Um, so we have Biff and Happy. Um, and if, if you want to, you can just choose a character at the beginning and before you even read it and just assign one to yourself and then have that and just say, okay, I'm gonna look to see how this character changes. I'm gonna just grab Linda. And I'm just gonna see how Linda changes through the play and make a thesis about it. Um, I'm just going to grab Biff. I'm just going to grab Happy, and I'm going to I'm going to follow that character through the play and see how they change. Um, and that's a perfectly fine way to do it. It might actually help focus your reading as you read to have somebody you're looking for um, and and studying. Um, and, and if you if your mind tends to wander while you read, uh, that's a great strategy to give yourself an assignment ahead of time for something to look for while you read. Um, so you can just you know, throw a dart, pick a character, and then study the text for that character. Um, all right. Uh, questions about that, about the outline. You're using my outline as a model, um, but you're going to use these characters. Okay. Does everybody have a sense of what their thesis is going to sound like? Okay. In a lot of ways, this is probably the easiest thesis to come up with that we've had this semester. Um, it's, it's real instinctive um, and pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, all right, let's talk about understanding how plays are written when we look at them, okay? Um, can everybody see my screen? I'm gonna make it a little bigger so that we can see it a little bit better together. And I'm going to move us out of the way over here. This part that's in italics at the top, what is it? What, what are these? Behind the kitchen on a level raised six and a half feet is the boy's bedroom, at present barely visible. Two beds are dimly seen, and at the back of the room, a dormer window. This bedroom is above the unseen living room. At the left, a stairway curves up to it from the kitchen. What is this? 
it is a description. We have a particular term for the descriptions of what happens in a play. Does anybody know what those are? Anybody been in a play? We have no we have no actors and actresses here. That's okay. We call them stage directions. Okay. So when you see something in italics here, they are stage directions. And the stage directions are how the director of a movie or the director of a stage play knows how to set up the stage, knows how to set up the scene, um, knows how to tell the characters where to go, right? So in this one where it says, from the right, Willie Loman, the salesman, enters, carrying two large sample cases, and the flute plays on. He hears, but is not aware of it. He is past 60 years of age, dressed quietly. Even as he crosses the stage doorway of the house, his exhaustion is apparent. He unlocks the door, comes into the kitchen, and thankfully lets his burden down, feeling the soreness of his palms. A word sigh escapes his lips. It might be, oh, oh boy, oh boy. He closes the door and then carries his cases into the living room through the draped kitchen doorway. So this is telling that character, even, even like, okay, you're going to sigh and say whatever words come out. You're rubbing your hands. They're sore. You're tired, right? They're the directions that the actor is supposed to follow when they walk on stage. Right, so we call those the stage directions. Pretty straightforward. But notice here when we get down to this, what do we see here? We see dialogue, correct? Um, and it says, Linda, Willie. Now, when we're using this in our text, we're going to ignore the names, okay? We're going to turn these, when we write about them, into Linda says, comma, quote, Willie. And we're not going to say Linda says, comma, quote, Linda colon, stage directions, <laughs> Willie. We get rid of everything except what the character says, okay? Um, the same way the characters in the play aren't walking around saying their name before each one of their lines. That would be super weird, right? Um, so we're going to quote this the same way it would be performed, which is that we'll strip out all of the stuff that tells us who's talking and what they're doing when they talk. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Um, if you're talking about stage directions, like what is, like, you can tell Linda is exhausted, the stage directions tell us she's exhausted then you can quote the stage directions. Remember to put them in italics and remember to tell us that they're stage directions, okay? <laughs> Dialogue is an important term when we are talking about drama. Um, we also have a few other terms about how people talk. Does anybody know the term for it when one character talks by themselves to the audience for a long time? <laughs> It can, well, it's called a soliloquy. Soliloquy is when they talk to the audience for a long time, okay? S-O-L, I-L, O, Q-U-Y. Sol, il, o, qui. But Riley's not wrong. There's another thing called a monologue. And a monologue is when one character talks for a long time, but they're talking to the other characters, right? Um, if you've seen The Incredibles, they always point out that <laughs> they're kind of hilarious. They're like, oh, you got me monologuing, right? It's when one character goes on and on and on. And they're always joking that the, the bad guys in The Incredibles are, are prone to monologue, right? Um, and they go on and on. But that's when there's other characters on stage to listen to them. When a character is alone on stage, talking directly to their, to their audience as if they're thinking out loud, we call that a soliloquy. So two different words for one character talking for a long time. Monologue is when there's other people to listen on stage, other characters to listen. Um, and a soliloquy is when they're just out there by themselves talking with the audience. Make sense? Okay, when they're talking to each other, that's dialogue, same as it is in a, in a, in a um, prose text, right? And we organize 
plays differently than um, than we organize uh, short stories. So this is uh, organized in acts and scenes. So we have act one, and if we scroll down, well, I'm going to kind of scroll all the way to the end here. And you'll see that at the end, that's Walter and Mama. I think we've gone to another play entirely here. Don't read both plays, just, just read this one. Okay, Death of a Salesman, Act Two. And I believe it's just a two act play. Some of the, like Shakespeare's plays are five act plays. Um, but Arthur Miller's is a two-act play, um, and I believe it ends, I'm just scanning, don't want to scan too fast, but I don't want to get, yeah, because we're, now we're talking about Charlie. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's kind of, let me see. The next page will tell us it might be a three act play. Let's look. No, it's a two act play and they just have the little um, requiem at the end. Um, but then we have a raisin in the sun act one. You don't have to read a raisin in the sun just because it's part of the same PDF. Um, stop when uh, we're done with his funeral. Okay. All right. Um, spoiler alert. Somebody dies. <laughs> it's okay. Um, guess what? Everybody dies in Hamlet, too. You know that, right? They all die at the end. It's still worth reading. All right. Um, so stage directions, soliloquy, monologue, dialogue, um, act and scene is how it's organized rather than paragraph or chapter. Um, we still call the author the author. We don't have a narrator here. And it, instead of saying the narrator says, that's where we have the stage directions. And we would just simply say that there's that it says it in the stage directions. And that's how we'd talk about that. Um, the way we refer to the characters is mostly the same. We still have a protagonist and an antagonist. We have main characters. Um, I would say that instead of saying that we have Secondary characters, I would call them supporting characters, the same way we do when we're talking about the Oscars. We have the, um, the main characters, and then we have supporting actors and actresses. Lead, lead actor and supporting actor is kind of what you're thinking about. So we have our main characters and our supporting characters. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that you'd need to know about reading drama before you get into reading the drama. I don't think so. I think it's pretty straightforward. I really think it is important to realize that this is a script that you're reading and it's meant to be performed and um, it might help to like imagine you've been cast as Linda and realize that everything that says Linda in front of it is your lines and you've got to read those. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to stop the share, take questions about what we're doing, and just touch base with you in general. How are we feeling about this? Okay, keep in mind, if this can be performed in two hours, it can be read in about two hours, right? So it, it's, I know it's a whole work, um, but it shouldn't take a long time to get through it. It's a couple of hours work to read it and a couple to watch the film. Um, pop some popcorn, watch the film. It's free, so that's nice. Um, and uh, just try to enjoy it. It's really pretty amazing performance. Um, all right, questions. What's due this week? Yeah, the, and the, the discussion board is really important because we won't have a discussion on Wednesday, so it's actually really important for you to participate in that discussion board. 
um, we will talk about the play. And on Monday, that's going to be really what we do. We're going to spend a long time talking about the play on Monday to make sure everybody understands it, make sure we've talked about it, make sure we've talked about the characters and how they change. Um, I would like you to have a good bead on how you think each character changes um, when we come to talk about the play on Monday um, and say, hey, I think this character loses hope. I think this character um, steps up to the plate. I feel like this, you know, what is it that you think each character, how do you think each character has changed um, through the course of the play would be a great um, reading goal for you to set for yourselves for this week. Okay, questions? Okay, I'm gonna stop recording and then I'm gonna, uh